We begin tonight with methamphetamine contamination and the cost to one man who was evicted from his Housing New Zealand home. His name is uh, Robert Eruiti, and he'd lived in his Housing New Zealand property for 15 years. His eviction followed tests in eight rooms. Seven samples were at levels so close to zero they barely registered at all. The eighth was 0 0.59 with a limit of 0 0.5. Robert lost his home and everything he owned for being 0.09 over a limit now scientifically discredited to the point of absurdity. He was never charged, no one really believed he was responsible for any meth contamination, but because his was the name on the tenancy agreement, he was evicted. We looked at Robert Eruiti's case because after his eviction, he spent 58 weeks in emergency accommodation at a cost of $44,000. Checkpoint's Michelle Cook first told that story on this program last December and Phil Twyford had heard it at the time and came on live to apologise. I listened to Michelle Cook's story on Checkpoint last night and I heard them tell the story of what's happened to Robert since he was evicted more than a year ago and, and first living in a motel in a grotty boarding house and now living in a tent. And it, it really summed up for me what I felt for a while now about um, how wrong uh, Housing New Zealand policy had been uh, handling this issue of meth contamination. And I felt that it was so bad and so wrong what had happened that Robert deserved um, an apology. So I, I went and met with uh, Robert and his daughter Casey and I apologised to them on behalf of the government. Phil Twyford making his first apology to a Housing New Zealand evictee on Checkpoint six months ago. Robert Eruiti's daughter is Casey McCary. I spoke to her a short time ago and she told me her father is still repaying some of the money he got from the Ministry of Social Development for the emergency accommodation he needed after his eviction. More on that in a couple of minutes, but first her reaction to what we have learned this week. It still feels like yesterday my dad was evicted because it was such a stressful process for myself and my family. So um, I'm actually, I'm very angry and disappointed that, um, and I still believe he was wrongfully evicted. And Casey, it wasn't only the eviction Robert suffered, and it's really worth stressing this because you absolutely believe what Housing New Zealand was telling you, that there was a serious meth contamination problem, so serious Robert had to go, and so serious that he lost all his furniture, all his possessions too. Because he had stuff in his property that he had for over some time, for over 15 years, he had collected things um, and furniture, and, and you could just imagine the amount of stuff that he had in his house um, he had to find a way to get rid of it because I said to him, everything's contaminated, Dad. Um, if, if you're getting evicted, we need to get everything out of here. Everything has to go. And so he, he was quite emotionally upset, and so was I. And, and um, it was so stressful because no one actually wanted to help my dad except for um, his sister. So he had support from his sisters to clean the property out. He left it in a beautiful state when he left. Um, and the rubbish that, well, oh, not the rubbish, sorry, the furniture and everything inside the house, the only thing that we left were the curtains. Everything inside the house went to the rubbish dump. And when he did become uh, rehomed, it was such a long process. It was such a stressful process to find things to put in my dad's house because he did not want to get any advances from work and income because his advances had been used up from when you ha actually had to pay for the motel, when it actually was... Uh, the law was that you had to pay for the motel and then Paula Bennett changed it to where it was a non-recoverable coverable grant, sorry. Do you remember how much the cost of your dad's emergency accommodation was in total? Uh, over $44,000 uh, the government paid 
for my dad to live in emergency accommodation. And that's and because believe... one room in his house was 0 0.09 above the lowest limit. Yes. Of that $44,000, how much did your dad have to return? Uh, he has to return 10000 It's between 8000 and 10000 that he owes uh, MSD for emergency accommodation. And it still comes out of his benefit today. And that's something that uh, my dad and I have spoken about because we also believe that that should be wavered, that he should not have to pay that money. So your dad is still repaying the cost of his emergency accommodation, or at least the first part of his emergency accommodation before the government agreed to pick up the bill? Yes, John. And this is emergency accommodation that he only had to take out because he was evicted on the basis of an incredibly low meth contamination in one of eight rooms tested? Yes, John. It's Casey McCarry. Sir Peter Gluckman is the Prime Minister's science advisor. The work from his team has this week brought this issue to its extraordinary head. I asked Sir Peter, was Robert Eruiti's health at risk from a sample in one room of 0 0.59? No. I mean, that's just a tragic misuse of information, even in the past. It's, that's sad. What was going on that stuff like that was happening? Well, I think at the end of the day, there's been some really sloppy thinking, uh, presumably with interests involved along the way, that has led to standards that were developed internationally for one particular purpose somehow sliding over to be used in New Zealand because of a large beat up on uh, on and being used misused for other purposes. And so the standard was for labs, wasn't it? It was where methamphetamine was being produced. Yeah, the standard was produced. Well, the the, the concept of measuring meth down and cleaning to a certain level was developed entirely to be certain that where meth had been synthesised uh, illegally, uh, that uh, the place had been cleaned adequately to be sure that solvents and other chemicals and meth were reduced to a level that was safe for human habitation. Somewhere along the line, in New Zealand, and only in New Zealand, that level of adequate cleaning went somehow transmitted to being a safety level for passive surface contamination with meth. And you have said repeatedly this week that there is no evidence whatsoever anywhere in the world from the scientific literature you have studied of third-hand harm as a result of that kind of contamination. Correct. I mean, we have, uh, I think of all the things that surprised me was, given the messaging that was out there that the passive exposure was dangerous, to actually get into the literature, the medical literature, and really study it in some depth, there's not one iota of evidence that levels of this kind are toxic or harmful, even with chronic, chronic repeated, uh, I guess, exposures to these very low levels. 